there's always two sides of the trade and the two sides are always floating in value. So it's an important point to understand. So if you think that you're not taking a risk by putting your money into a CD or high interest savings accounts, you're wrong. It is December 28th, and of course, this is the video log that takes 30,000 to a million. I'm going to run you through the portfolio, and today I'm going to talk about risk. So that should be interesting. I am sitting at an all-time high, and actually I scored the all-time high yesterday, but and today but the account went down a little bit, but I'll show you anyways. So, whoa, a little off-center, apologies. I do this live, there's no cuts or anything like that. Um, no, I'm not going to edit or redo. So I'm sitting at $77,917. That is an all time high for the video logs. If you look at the week chart, I actually had an intraday high of almost 78,500 and then a close of roughly 78,300. So I was above 78,000. That is the official high. But nevertheless, this is what I'm showing today, 77,900. A few updates on the account. One, I actually sold a couple hundred share, uh, call, I'm sorry, I sold a couple calls. So I put out a couple hundred shares of EXK out there for the possibility to be sold at 250. So I'm trying to like thin my position a little bit just because I think that EXK was not going to benefit as much from this silver push higher that we're experiencing right now. By the way, the silver push higher, um, I've talked about it a lot so far. Um, if you go back um, quite a few episodes, you'll see that I've been predicting this for quite some time. Even um, in September when things, when we had a big drop from the 1950 level of silver, uh, I thought that was a huge drop and it's going to take like six months to recover until we reach that price point again if we do and I think that that six months is playing out and within the next uh, two or three months we're probably going to see another uh, push towards that price level so this is what I've been um, kind of predicting and counting on I've been actually as you can see here I have purchased quite a bit in silver calls straight naked silver calls um, over here and you can see that they are up 36% this far, or $288, but they'll be up a lot more if um, Silver were just to gain $1 or $2, this, this would be a really profitable trade. And I'm counting on that. And this could be, I could gain $1,000, $2,000, or $3,000, depending on how high the price goes by April. Uh, I sold my June call for like $100 profit because I just wanted to lighten the position up. And uh, make sure that if there is another dip, I'm able to re-enter and have some profits on the table to work with. Although I've re-rolled the profits into other things. Now, uh, say I'm doing the same thing with EXK because I want to start collecting money off of it. And I don't want it to be a dead position. Um, and I'm, I'm taking the risk, right? I'm losing the opportunity to make more money by collecting this money. But I already have a pretty heavy silver position, so I don't need to go into that any further. Apple was pretty even on the day here. Uh, let's see. I've got, still got the call, so uh, plus 12 here, negative 43 on the option, losing position for the day. Everything else is fairly flat. Chemical was down $135, and you might think that's a big move, but it's actually a small move. It's only a percent, considering how much equity I have into Chemical right now. It's an enormous position, $13,245. Uh, of course, 200 of those shares are already pre-sold and or through calls. And also, I have uh, $1,700 worth of uh, puts collateral here. So these are the options that I have playing on Chemical right now. I want to sell more calls, but I need to wait for the price of Chemical to go above $9 at least for me to start selling some 950 calls. Uh, probably into February or April or March. So that's what's going on there. This has been the overview of the account. Uh, nothing overly exciting going on, except actually, I just picked up some uh, extra bonds with my extra cash. 
I'm keeping it $755 this is just the BND I did a video interestingly enough on for beginners if you guys are regular followers of uh, this video log you probably know that I put out some videos for beginners to try to help you manage your money if you don't know if you know nothing about stocks and investing and whatnot and BND is actually one of the symbols one of the um, you know the ETFs that I suggest that beginners buy so it's interesting that I'm deciding to buy this right now to keep the extra cash in there until of course cash management is introduced and maybe I keep more cash in there and just forego the BND just for the sake of uh, you know uh, eliminating extra trans transactions so that's that's what I got about to say about that so moving on here um, the other interesting thing that I did was I talked about energy transfer before and how I might sell puts to it on it and I did so um, currently down eight dollars in the position but uh, basically what I've done is I've promised to buy 200 shares of energy transfer at thirteen dollars if the price stays at thirteen or below or I think just below thirteen so that will execute and hopefully you know I pick up 200 shares uh, the dividend on this company is fat and I'm looking forward to being an owner of this company I talked a little bit about the reasoning as to why I want this company in my account here and one the re first reason is technical as you can see there's a break through the trend line here um, Robin Hood is not very well known for its technical charts but you can see that and reason number two is because I see a slight correlation between the commodities here especially oil and precious metals and all that and copper and so I think they're going to be traveling together upwards for a little bit over the next few months at least. And I want to take advantage of that. So that's why. And you can see the dividend here. Hopefully I hit a dividend or two while I'm holding the position at 9.28%, which is enormous. Okay. So that's it with the account. Next. I don't know if this is actually bothering anyone, but my heater is on. I don't know if it's too loud or whatever. I want to talk about risk, right? So... I was watching this presentation by some MIT instructor and I actually do this pretty often so I'll I suggest all you guys do it if you want to just educate yourselves and you want to pay fat tuitions for colleges and universities that are way overpriced in my opinion at least for the spot to be there you can find a lot of free lectures online on everything so anyways I was watching this uh, a lecture about the modern portfolio and about the split you know between um, bonds and stocks and everything else and how to construct a portfolio based on risk tolerance and whatnot and it just you know just occurred you know not occurred but it kind of reiterated what I was already thinking is that you can't really escape risk and risk is very subjective to begin with I mean there was there were things that are explored and ways to define risk like volatility or maximum loss uh, which are both very good good ways to determine risk so first to explain to you what I'm talking about is let's say we'll look at my account okay this is my all-time account and you might say all right well this account has dropped from by 10% within you know May to within like a month okay before and it's done it a couple times and it happens like maybe once every I don't know year or six months and so then you start using that proxy to determine the risk of the of the asset and so you can include that into your calculations when you determine how safe uh, an asset is um, but you know volatility doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's guaranteed gains or whatnot it just means that if you, you are losing or you are winning you're gonna do it slowly so you can make a better judgment about what to do with your account right so um, Let's, BND is actually considered a very low volatility asset, uh, but it's now changing its tune. But you can see how over the last five years, uh, the price of these bonds has changed from like 85 to 80 to like 79 to 83, and now it's sitting at 83.96. So, and all these changes happen very slowly, except for right here, drop from 83 to 80, basically within a month. Um, but this is a, basically an, an exchange traded fund, which is a vehicle, it's a combination of a bunch of bonds that are constructed to get exposure to the bond market. And so, um, I mean, it's, it's good. It's a good way to park cash. 
So anyway, that's an example of a non-volatile asset. If you want to see a volatile asset, like just pull up any weed stock or, you know, another favorite of Robin Hoodites, which is Tesla. Right. So you use volatility to determine the risk. I mean, you know, this stock's gone from 383 to like 300. So that's, you know, what is that? Like uh, 30 percent or something like that. Uh, not 30 percent, but, you know, 15, 20 percent loss within like a day <laughs> over here. It's got a gain from 260, you know, up like 30 percent in a day. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And now it's having another volatile session, you know, another 10, 15 percent up in a day or two. So it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's a very volatile stock. Um, so you use volatility. Number second way to use volatility uh, to use to determine risk in another way. I shouldn't say second and only, but another way to do it is through, uh, of course, your personal maximum loss. Right. So a good way to think about investing in something is like, OK, what is the maximum I'm willing to lose outright? And then go from that and then you can scale back. Um, OK, so, for example, if I'm willing to lose, if I have a uh, hundred thousand dollars and I'm only willing to lose like two percent of it or five percent of it, let's say in a year. And I'm I am just completely satisfied with getting two point seven percent return per year on that. Right. With the possibility of losing five percent in any given year, then, you know, that might be a good um, risk profile for a bond. Or if you don't even want to lose any of your principal, right, you might be a good candidate for a cash account or um, short term treasuries or, you know, um, the new Robinhood cash management feature they're going to be introducing or a CD. OK, something that will pay you one point eight. Uh, uh, percent it's the percent is really determined by the Federal Reserve at this point but 1.8 percent per year at the moment uh, you can get it at some places 1.82 well at Wealthfront I got to talk to you about Wealthfront a little bit later and um, or just a uh, high interest savings accounts that may or may not require you to lock up the money in there for a little bit but you're not going to lose any dollar principal guaranteed and uh, you're going to be gaining 1.8 or so percent per year on that money. So if you have a hundred thousand dollars, you'd be getting like a uh, thousand, you know, eight hundred dollars, eighteen hundred dollars per year. Is that right? <laughs> so <clears throat> that's what that's what you'd be getting on that hundred K. Um, now, just to point out, though, all of this stuff, right, all of these ways that you are determining risk are a little bit bogus, okay? They're a little bit superficial and artificial because there's risk in everything. And the number one thing that kind of bugs me, I mean, it doesn't really bug me, but the people say I think it's erroneous is that, you know, someone might say, oh, I'm not a betting man or something like that. And I think that's BS because you're making a bet every time that you do anything, right? So you're walking out of your front door making a bet that there isn't going to be a lightning strike that strikes you dead as soon as you walk out the front door. Sure, the possibility of that is very small, but you're still making an action based on that bet. There's so many risks that could happen. I mean, you could, someone, let's talk about a, a higher risk, uh, which is, you know, uh, getting maybe into a car accident and a fatal car accident, and it could happen. And uh, the risk is actually, you know, it's more likely than a... A, a lightning you know people get into fatal car accidents in fact there's statistics that uh, every single person will be involved in a car accident at some point in their life so it's very interesting statistic and um, should put things into perspective so but these these same people that call themselves that they're not betting people they still go out and drive cars you know so maybe their risk tolerance isn't as much as somebody else they avoid riskier things, but they're still taking on risk, if that makes sense, right? Now, one important point about these people with the CD accounts, and um, if, you're, if you're one of these people, for example, that think that 
you know, it's very risky to stay in the market. It was very risky to buy bonds. Uh, what I urge you to consider is that there's also currency risk. You know, the dollars that are sitting into your CD account or the dollars that are sitting into your savings account, they go up and down in value too, like all the time. They're not just sitting there. The value of the dollar doesn't just stay static, okay? The value of the do dollar changes against the value of other currencies in the world. Just look at the Forex market, right? That's what happens within nanoseconds. It happens all the time. It changes value, um, uh, correlate, you know, uh, um, um, the gold and, and the dollar, right? They change value. So you can price dollars in gold and you can price gold in dollars, okay? So it's a it's a correlated pair, right? So well, that's not, what's the word? Not correlated, but you get what I'm talking about, right? It's a pair of two things that they can price each other. You know, gold is more traditional money. Dollar is like, you know, the more um, modern way we do things. So you can say one dollar is worth X grams of gold or whatever. Uh, you can price uh, U.S. dollars in gallons of milk. You can price it in gallons of oil. You can price it in whatever, in uh, sparkling water. It doesn't really matter, right? But the value of the dollar always changes. It's just that the dollar is so, it's so liquid. There's so much of it out there that um, it tends to change slower in value than a lot of smaller asset groups like let's say silver, for example, or a small currency, um, maybe, I don't know, the Russian ruble <laughs> is smaller, okay? So those currency will change value a lot more, but it's not like the dollar is static in value and everything else in the world goes up and down, but the t dollar never changes. That's just by definition isn't true, okay? You can't have that happening. There's always two sides of the trade and the two sides are always floating in value. So it's an important point to understand. So if you think that you're not taking a risk by putting your money into a CD or high interest savings account, you're wrong. You're just taking perhaps less risk than somebody else. I mean, just ask somebody who's lived through a hyperinflation like me, for example, what could happen to a currency? I mean, the, the value of your currency could get wiped out within a year or less. So, for example, what does that mean? That means that one day you wake up and buy a cheeseburger for $5. And then a month later, you wake up and that cheeseburger costs $500 or $5,000. And now your 2% or 1.8% interest rate that you have in your CD or high interest savings account, what does that help you? You know, it doesn't help you at all. You know, all the interest that you've earned through the year is not enough to buy you half of a cheeseburger. So what was the point? But if you have held it into something like stocks or gold or some other real asset, maybe real estate or something like that, then you will have had preserved some of your purchasing power. All right. And um, you would eliminate that currency risk. So in some sense, these assets that are riskier than a CD or savings account now become the safe haven. Do you see how this works? All right. So something that's considered more risky is now the safer thing, the safer option out of the two. So the parameters change, you know, the risks change and floats all the time, depending on what's going to happen, what's happening in the world. And um, it's our job to adjust ourselves with that. So I, I urge you to think about that aspect whenever you are managing your own uh, money and assets is that um, at some point something that seems extremely risky is actually safer depending on the circumstance all right i think i'm gonna tie it on right there because i've already talked for like 18 19 minutes so <clears throat> i'm gonna finish off on that thought hopefully that was a beneficial conversation for you i update on the update you on the account and just remember there is always risk in everything so just make sure that you swim through it successfully okay and with knowledge and skill all right i'm gonna be taking a trip to uh sovang tomorrow so i'm kind of excited about that gotta wake up early but i'll try to get this video out and uh i'll see you later peace out